But it turns out, and we know this now, like a woman named Becca Levy, she's at Yale, she's done most of the work on aging and stereotype. It's deadly. Like we are literally killing old people by how we talk about them. It's it's wow. amazing the impact of, stereo, of st- stereotypes on health and longevity. But anyways, it's early days. It's like 1981 and Ellen Langer dreams of this fucking insane experiment. She takes a group of 80 year old men She's at Harvard. She drives them two hours north of Boston. They've (laughs) taken over a monastery and they've made them, it's 1981, they've made the monastery look exactly like 1961. So the posters on the wall are from 61. All the magazines are from 61. All the books are for 61. And she brings people in and she takes the group of 80, the 16 of them, eight of them just sort of reminisce about 1961. What was it like? Oh, I remember Kennedy was blah, blah, blah. And the Cuban, the other group, the study group, pretends it's 1961. They play act as if it's 20 years younger. They talk about the Cuban Missile Crisis as if it's an ongoing current event. They watch movies from 90s, et cetera, et cetera. Uh. And they measure everything cognitively and everything physically you could possibly measure. Use list all the way along. Five days later, just five days, the subjects who pretended, they both saw benefits, but the subjects who pretended it to be 20 years younger, their vision improved on a Snelling eye chart. Their hearing improved. Their disease symptoms fell away. Their gaits improved. Their arthritis went away so much. This is the crazy one. They got taller and their fingers got longer. Wow. In five days. Yeah, yeah. Wow, in fact, there's dude. video. A touch football game breaks out. They're waiting for the bus to go back to Harvard. And this group of 80-year-old men start playing football, touch football, on the lawn. Like, it's it, crazy. They don't... The experiment is so wow. wild, nobody believes it. So they redo it three different times for three different TV shows in Europe. Two different... Three different networks in Europe redo the experiment for TV shows. They still don't believe it's possible, so they redo it again in 2019 with all full modern data gathering. And my point is... And this is Ellen's point. Aging is as much a mental event as a physical process. So a lot of the biggest interventions that we can do for peak performance aging are psychological, not physical, which is very counterintuitive. Like most people, when they want to take care of themselves, they're getting older, they're immediately, they're changing their diet and things like that. And exercise is usually important. Human growth hormone, testosterone, (laughs) supplements, steroids. Seriously, like, you know, all... And those are, so let me give you, this is what's funny about it. If I were to give you peak performance aging in a sentence, this is the sentence. If you want to rock till you drop, you want to regularly engage in challenging, creative, social activities that demand dynamic, deliberate play. And I'll talk about what the word dynamic means in a second and take place in novel outdoor environments. But the point I want to make on that is you didn't hear supplements. You didn't hear diet. You didn't hear all the long list of stuff you just tried it out. None of it is on the list. Why outdoor? So let me walk you. So di- let me start with dynamic and walk you through that. Okay. Dynamic is, 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 so I said there are a bunch of users who lose it skills on the physical side. You need to train and we know exactly how long you're supposed to train each of these as we age strength, stamina, flexibility, balance, and agility on a regular basis. Okay. Dynamic is one word that means all five of those things. So skiing okay. Tennis. These are dynamic activities. What does that mean? Right. It means they need strength, stamina, agility, balance, and flexibility. That's what yeah. they mean. Dynamic deliberate play is the opposite. Of deliberate practice is like repetition with incremental advancement. Deliberate play is repetition with improvisation. And it's just way more fun. There's less shame. There's less self-consciousness. And it right. produces far better learning. And lifelong learning is what we're after here. Novel outdoor environments. So why do you want this in novel outdoor environments? So... If you want to preserve brain function, you want to birth new neurons. You want new neurons, new neurogenesis, and you want them to form new neural networks. So we know specifically that um, this is why, so you have something called cognitive reserve. It's what protects you against cognitive decline, Alzheimer's, dementia, people with high cognitive reserve. You can even have Alzheimer's, have, you know, they autopsy your brain upon death. It's filled with tangles and plaques. If you've got a big cognitive reserve, you won't show any symptoms. And this is one of the findings we that goes back to the 90s. Um, and we can talk about why, oh, but really, wow, and, and if you want to build wild. up cognitive reserve, this is why you need lifelong learning. So you want co- lifelong learning because it produces cognitive reserve. What is that? What am I talking about? Lifelong learning 
is I want expertise and wisdom. Those are the two things that matter. Expertise is sort of all the stuff we learn consciously. Wisdom yeah. is often the stuff we learn unconsciously, but that's yeah. those aren't good definitions. Here's what you need to know. The part of the brain that is most vulnerable to cognitive decline, Alzheimer's dementia, to prefrontal cortex, parts right behind your forehead, right? It's the newest part of the brain from an evolutionary perspective, so it's the most vulnerable. The stuff that's deep in the brain, stem and whatever, not age doesn't touch it at all. It's the right. new stuff um, that's really vulnerable. So when we have expertise and wisdom, what those things are are really diffuse networks of neurons in the prefrontal cortex, and they're very redundant. Expertise, one of the properties of the brain is redundancy. Like you never just learn one way to do something, you learn six or seven. And so there, you have these backup networks running through the entire prefrontal cortex yeah. that protects the brain. So to maximize lifelong huh. learning, to maximize these new networks, to maximize neurogenesis, you have to ask yeah. a simple question, which is, okay, if I need new neurons, to protect my brain, where are they born in the brain? Like, where do I get them? Right. Where do they come from, right? right? So it turns out the adult brain will produce like 700 new neurons every day, even until like basically you die, but they come out of a place in the brain known as the hippocampus. The hippocampus does two things. It does long-term memory and it does location. It's filled with like place cells and grid cells. Why? We evolved as hunter-gatherers. So the brain is designed to remember exactly where you were when you had emotionally charged experiences in novel right. outdoor environments. Why? Where's the ripe fruit tree? Okay, I got to remember that next spring yeah. when I'm looking for food. Where did right. I get attacked by that tiger? Okay, I don't ever want to go back there. Where was that watering hole? Yeah. Those, that's survival, right? So the brain is designed to specifically remember that. So I always say that peak performance is getting our biology to work for us, rather than against us. Right. Peak performance aging is the same thing. It's getting your biology to work for you rather than against you. It's applied to the challenges and opportunities of aging. So all these new neurons are showing up in the part of the brain that is designed for map making and pathfinding. So if you have, if you're getting your these experiences, you're doing your learning in novel outdoor environments, that's what the brain was designed to remember. So you're using the system exactly like it was built for. And so what you end up with is more neurogenesis, more new neurons and more robust neural networks. You know, um, you've, you've um, discovered here, Stephen, you know, you've discovered, you've discovered that outdoor sex will heal the brain because it mm. fits in. It's a physical activity. It's physical. It's dynamic. In, it's dynamic. It's, it's you can be very playful. Improvisational. Bring peanut butter. <laughs> peanut no, butter. You're right. you, 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 <laughs> you've been hanging out with dogs too long. It might be right. Um, uh, That's incredible. It was the first thing what, that popped what, into my mind. Listen, uh, whatever yeah. floats your boat, I'm, and this is what you're saying is incredible. Like, like you're saying, you're. It's like we have this like uh, an aspect of our brain that is being underutilized compared to what we used to, what we needed it for. Right? Where we have our GPS, we've got our technology it, we don't need to know where anything is anymore and most of us are stuck in a pattern where we're definitely not going to novel outdoor environments we're going from point a to point b point a to point b and so you're saying it's sort of like we have these and by the way these, there's, i mean there's 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 new apps now i just saw this there's an app now that will so let's say you got to go to the store you know make you a map based on greenery so you can, I got to go to the store. It will give you a novel environment that maximizes your exposure to trees. Ooh, so wow. there, there does seem to be some benefit to technology after all. Oh my God. That's so crazy. I, but just to clarify, it's, it's, it, it's like you're saying that if you want to grow new neurons, the place they're coming from is this theoretically underutilized part of the human brain that it's like, it's, it's the redundancy. It's not underutilized. I mean, it's, okay. it's I mean, the hippocampus is not, it's not, underutilized is an interesting word there, but it's the, I mean, it's just designed to figure out, you know, it's designed to remember emotionally charged incidents in novel outdoor okay. environments. That's how to get it to be the most active. And that's how the, it also knows, oh shit, this is really important. I need to save this. I need redundancy. I need backup. Because you're having a novel experience, outdoor, right? Because that's what it was designed to do. So Unbelievable. you're just using that. But that's always been sort of one of my sort of approaches is evolution designed all, all these systems for a purpose. And if you can, you know, evolutionary psychology, evolutionary neurobiology is about seeing if you could align that closely because it's, you're just using the system the way it's designed to be used. You get better results. 
I'm telling you, this is a lightning rod. Like you have done, like to, to me, what, what you've done here, uh, is not just great for people my age or older people, but you know, if you're in your twenties and you've got that old mindset and I think some, so, I think right oh, now, yeah. so we can talk do. about where that comes from. No, you're totally right. It sets up for some people and it's insidious. It comes from a good place, but it's, it can set up as early as like 25, 26 uh. and you're literally killing yourself. Like With you think thoughts. this mindset is keeping you safe and it's actually killing you, which is crazy. Wow. And so let me tell you where it comes from. Cause you'll, you'll totally get it. As you know, we have all these reward neurochemicals and we get addicted to them, right? People with yes. the cell phones are addicted to dopamine, right? That's a Absolutely. dopamine addiction. So when we're younger, teen, uh, kids and in, into teenage years and early twenties, we're dominated. So we're dominated by the seeking system and the play system. We're going out in the world. We're trying to figure out who we are. How do we want to live? Yeah. What do we want? What don't we want? Like all that stuff. We, some of the social neurochemistry comes in, but the seeking system is predominantly norepinephrine and dopamine, right? Yeah. Those are the drugs we're addicted to. As soon as we start getting stuff, we found stuff that we want. I've got the right partner. I've got the right job. I've got the apartment yeah. I like. I've got the car. We yeah. trade our addiction to norepinephrine and dopamine, which are about seeking, give me something new to serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphins, protect what I have. Now we <laughs> do this switch naturally when we have kids, right? Cause yeah. you don't, you don't want to shut, you want to shut down the seeking system cause you got to stay with your partner yes. to raise the kids, right? Yes. So it's a healthy biological trait. It turns out for peak performance aging, you need all these systems. So you have to reignite the seeking system and the play system. Reignite get, the seeking system. Ah, I love it. Oh my God. That's my new mantra in life. Thank you. Hari Krishna. No more. Reignite the seeking no system. Re that's reignite I, the seeking system. Oh my Steven God. Sixth. That's giving me goosebumps. It's, you know, yeah, I, I'm a, I've got a, a two year old. A four-year-old and, and a baby on the way. So you are describing to me my life, but from a neurological perspective, which I didn't even realize. Everything so you here, just described so is a, what I'm this doing. This is a funny story. This is a funny ski story. And this is, so we call it getting geezered, which is when somebody gets the like, I'm too old for this shit juice on yes. you. So halfway through my ski season in the NAR season, um, I decide that I've got the wrong skis that I like there. I wait, I don't weigh enough. I can't bend my skis. So I'm talking to other people about their skis and okay. in these parking lots. And, um, we're in the, this is the most extreme example. We were at Kirkwood and I'm with my ski partner and this truck pulls up next to me and a guy and a girl get out, man, and a woman get out. And she's, she's maybe like 27. He's maybe 30. And he's skiing a pair of skis. The moment Death Wish said, I'm really interested. In it. I was like, oh, tell me about those skis. Are they good? Did they do yeah. this, this, this? And, and, and I was like, well, what are they like with like nose butters and 360s and things like that? And he's like, well, what is that? I was like, oh, park, park tricks. You know, stuff you do in the train park. His girlfriend jumps out of the cab, turns to me with the most anger I've ever seen. And she's like, we are too old for that shit. They can't tell how old I am because I've got a ski helmet on. I've got goggles on. I yeah. take my helmet off and I'm like, lady, you are ah. literally 35 <laughs> years younger than me. I don't know what's wrong with you, but you are 35 years younger than me. That's what I'm saying, man. That's what you're doing is like, this is like, go, you know, upstream. Well, the, uh, Yeah, there's another, sorry to interrupt you. There's no, one do. other point here that I want to mention because it's important, I think, because people don't get it. So what the cool thing about peak performance aging is on both sides of the spectrum. So on the late in life side, there's all kinds of data that says interventions will like make a difference even into your late eighties. They probably make a difference into your nineties, but we just don't have data showing that. But like you can be a sedentary couch potato and be 85 years old. And if you start any of these invent interventions, they're going to make a difference. But what the flip yeah. side is, what the data shows is for certain categories of things, peak performance aging starts young, really clearly starts yep. young. Um, I get so it. So there's a bunch of stuff you want to pay attention to, even in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s. Um, there's a lot of stuff in those decades that sort of matter here or could really you know, move the needle for you on the back end.